as you think about retirement, what's your biggest fear? I've advised hundreds of families and I can tell you by far the biggest fear is the fear of running out of money before you run out of life. But let's go for a walk and I'll share with you why I don't think that that should be your biggest fear. It should definitely be one of your, your concerns, but it shouldn't be your biggest fear, right? If, uh, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, if you're watching videos like this, you, you understand the basics, you're, you're putting together a game plan, you understand the, the importance of the financial situation and putting yourself in a position where financially you can retire. But it shouldn't be your biggest, it shouldn't be your biggest fear. I think your biggest fear should be the things that you can't undo, right? If, if you find that, hey, you know, I wish I had a little bit more money in retirement, there's other ways to make money. Um, but boy, you know, some of these other things that I think you should be fearful of, they're hard to undo, they're hard to change quickly. Um, and the first of those is regret. Uh, oftentimes, you know, people take their health for granted and nobody, none of us know how long we have our health for. You know, I've been doing this long enough that uh, I've, I've, I've seen my, people my age uh, have a stroke. In fact, my father uh, had his first stroke when he was younger than me. Fortunately, it was not debilitating for him, but it could have been. Uh, and I have seen people my age that, you know, think that they're going to work for another decade and unfortunately get a cancer diagnosis, a uh, heart condition, a stroke, something like that. So, you know, I, I think that the biggest fear we should have and the biggest thing that we should be constantly looking at is, you know, if I don't do these things, am I going to regret it later? You know, if you're close to being financially independent and there's things you and your spouse are really looking forward to doing, you know, maybe you take the leap sooner rather than later because, you know, you don't know. You or your spouse could have a health issue. And then once that happens, then are you going to be able to do the things that you worked your entire life for? So the first, the first thing that I think we all need to have a healthy dose of fear about um, is, is just potentially regret. Um, so that's the first one. The second one's related. And the second one is, you know, if, if you're married, you and your spouse are going through this journey together. Uh, and if you're, you're in a place where you can retire, you're close to being able to retire, and, and one of the spouses says, oh, you know, if they, my boss says if I work another, you know, 18 months, they're going to give me this bonus or, you know, I get this promotion if I stay. I think you want to be really, really careful about that because if, God forbid, something happens during that period of time, and, and you and your spouse are never able to do uh, some of the things that you've spent a lifetime dreaming about doing, um, your spouse might resent you for that. I, I have seen that happen. And I've seen that happen where uh, not only is the spouse resentful, but the spouse is the primary caregiver uh, for the person that had the health issue. And uh, boy, the last thing you want in that situation after having spent a, you know decades together as a married couple um, is, is to have one of the spouses resentful of the other. That, that kind of resentment can be, can be hard to overcome. Uh, so just be super careful. Again, these are cousins of each other, regret and resentment. And typically the resentment comes in when, you know, the, the, the other person said, no, we're going to do, we're going to postpone this for some reason. Uh, and if there wasn't a good reason for why it was postponed and now you can never do it, uh, or you can't do it the way that you had planned. That, that can be super painful. Um, okay, so those, those are the two most serious, right? Regret and resentment. But there's, there's, other, um, there's, there's other things that I think you should be fearful of, you should be cautious of, you should have a healthy dose of respect for. Um, and the first one's going to seem true. You're going to laugh when I say it, but it's super important. Uh, but it pales in comparison to the other two, I admit that. Uh, and that, you know, I, I see a lot of times people enter retirement and then they come see me as a financial advisor uh, and they have all of their money in tax deferred accounts. Uh, because when they were young, you know, they were, they, they were told, oh, put as much money in your 401k, put as much money in an IRA as you can. Uh, and that's a decent rule of thumb, certainly up to the employer's match. But if all of your retirement money is, is in tax deferred accounts, then every dollar you take out for, for getting access to capital for your spending, for your cash flows in retirement, 
then every dollar you're receiving is going to be or taxes ordinary income. So if you need to take out, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, or you know, a hundred thousand is not uncommon. All of that's going to be taxable income, uh, and it's also going to impact how much your Social Security is taxable. So uh, it's it's it sounds like a, a, a silly regret, but you know, you really want to have three buckets. You want to have a bucket like a 401k or a regular IRA, the tax deferred account, what I call a tax me later account. Uh, you also want to have a taxable account, which would be like at a normal brokerage uh, firm like Schwab or Fidelity. But then you also want to have money in a bucket that I call a tax me now, but then tax me never account. And those are the Roth versions, right? You put your contributions in after tax, so you're paying the tax now, but then it's tax me never, right? At least under the current tax law, hopefully it changes. It's, I'm sorry, hopefully it stays that way. Uh, I, I don't edit my videos, but if I could, I definitely want to take out the, the hopefully it changes. Hopefully the tax law does not change. Um, but um, this is something that you can fix this. Let's say you're 65 when you retire. You know, over time, you can move money into different buckets, but it can take a long time and it can be hard to move meaningful amounts of money. So um, that's something that I, uh, you don't necessarily be, need to be fearful of, but I think you need to have a healthy dose of, of respect for that. Uh, the next one is, is your health. Uh, really, really, really have a lot of, uh, I, and this I think is okay, you know, uh, the Bible says to work out your faith uh, with fear and trembling. And this is one, uh, and this is not a religious channel, but I, I like that phrase, fear and trembling. Uh, and I think we need to respect our health with fear and trembling and do what we can uh, to keep it because boy, it's hard to get it back once we, once we lose it. Uh, and, and then um, the last one is, I really encourage you sooner rather than later to think through you know, really what are your values? What, what's important to you? Uh, and understand why these values are important to you and, 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 and peel the onion back a couple layers and think through why these things are important to you. For instance, for me, um, accomplishment is super important to me. It's not my main value, but it's one of my, my values. It's part of how I identify myself. And, you know, why is accomplishment so important to me, right? Uh, and so I'll just quickly go through it. You know, accomplish, I, I know, I, in fact, I tell people, being uh, able to get a lot done uh, and, and uh, accomplishing things is one of my drugs of choice, right? Uh, and I mean, it's, it's a super healthy thing, but it can also, to a, taken to a certain extreme, be a negative thing. Uh, so why is accomplishing things so important to me? Well. You know, on the surface, I say, you know, because I want to be a good provider for my family. And I know if I can accomplish things, eventually, you know, that comes back in compensation that I can use to help pay for my kids' college and um, help them out in life and make sure that my wife and I have a secure financial future. But, you know, truth be told, there, there's more to that, the accomplishment side. It's a uh, uh, part of it is, is related to respect. I like the respect I get from my team members when I can get things done. And, and, and again, peeling the onion. Why is respect uh, so important to me? You know, and I'll, I'll share something. Uh, uh, my father ran uh, a small grocery store, like a 7-Eleven. Uh, neither one of my parents probably made more than twice of minimum wage. But, but for me, why is respect important? You know, and I think it's even worse now, but you know, I used to work with my father at the grocery store and, and candidly, a lot of people that came into the grocery store did not treat my father with respect. I didn't like how they treated my father. Um, and, and frankly, they didn't treat me with respect either. So respect is the thing for me. And, and so know what your values are and why you have those values. Uh, and if you don't know what the next step is, I, I have a friend uh, that has his PhD in psychology and he also does YouTube videos and and puts out a lot of information for free uh, And he has a worksheet that he's done. I believe it's twenty dollars Super affordable that that's very effective that can help you think through your values. My friend's name is Corey Wilkes This is not a sponsored video, but Corey if you want to sponsor me uh, You're welcome to in the future 
Uh, but Corey is uh, spelled C-O-R-E-Y and Wilkes is spelled W-I-L-K-E-S. Corey Wilkes, uh, and he has a spreadsheet where uh, you can, uh, in, a, in a couple hours, really get a, a much stronger sense as to what your values are and, and why, why those values are important to you. And the reason I think uh, understanding your values as soon as you can in your life is important. I want to quote Roy Disney here. He's got a great quote. Uh, Roy Disney said, it's not hard to make decisions when you know your values. Uh, and once you know your values, then a lot of the things um, that I've, I've talked about here, a lot of the things when it comes to retirement, uh, those decisions uh, become much easier. So again, these are, these are the fears uh, that I think are worth thinking about and, and challenges that are worth considering. Yes, running out of money uh, is something worth, you know, making sure that you've done what you can to, to have that projection. You know, I'm not sure if you're at 90% of plan and you think you need to work another three years to get to 100%. I don't know, you know, maybe 90% is close enough and you take advantage of it while you have your health, while you have your energy, why both you and your uh, spouse are uh, excited to retire. Again, we are adaptable. There are other ways to, to make money, um, but there's no other way to make time. And once your health is gone, unfortunately, our health is gone. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. It really does help the algorithm find other people that the video can, uh, uh, that the video, that, that the, my video, videos like this, my channel can help. And as the kids say, thumbs for likes and, uh, th and subs for love. Uh, if you like this video, consider subscribing and leave me a comment. I love reading the comments. And until next time, I'm a soul encouraging you to take full advantage of the youth of your senior years. Remember, you're only young once. Use your time wisely.